best printer for your print farm. Today we're gonna look at the Bamboo Labs A1 versus the P1S. Let's get into it. So first up, we're gonna talk about cost versus scale. If you look at the A1 right now, you can get it for $529 here in the US. Versus the P1S combo is $849 currently. So, and we expect those prices to go up. I'm hearing there's an exemption on tariffs for electronics, but I don't know if that includes printers. I can't find anything on that right now. So this is, in my opinion, a big area of concern, right? These are your primary production machines and it's not quite a two to one ratio, but we are looking at, you can get more printers per dollar in the A1 combo price versus the P1S combo price. And honestly, like you're probably looking at other options like Elegoo maybe coming into play here too, because they're providing a core XY at a bed slinger price, right? The difference between these two is this one's a bed slinger versus this one, the bed moves up and down, but the print head moves everywhere. On the bed slinger, the bed moves back and forth and the print head moves up and down and side to side. So, you know, you have to have that three dimensional movement and how you do it does kind of make a difference. We'll get into that a little bit later. So I think the big winner here is if you want to grow fast or you need to grow fast, your best bet is to go with the A1. Let's move on to point number two here, maintenance and reliability. On the side of the plus column for the A1, we have the nozzles, right? So the nozzle swaps out in seconds because it has that nice nozzle clip system. Uh, and then on the P1, you actually take the print head off. It's a little fiddly. Once you take it off, like they have those tiny little connectors you gotta put back. They're not hard, but they are, they, you can't always tell they're like all the way in there. You just kind of get a feel for it after a while that I think it's in there. Um, and then the fan starts running on the print head or whatever. So not the best kind of feedback system or tactile feel and it's enclosed, right? So it's a little harder to work on it. You can pull it down, you can take the top off. That'll make it a little easier to work on. The A1 is just like open, right? So I don't really have to mess with it much. I pop a, a front face plate off and I just, I can see the nozzle right there. The other thing with the P1S is they have a complete hot end assembly or you have to like take it apart and put in like the, you have to like thermal paste the thermistor onto it. You don't have to mess with any of that on the A1. So definitely point A1 here. The other thing to me that is great, uh, I love the AMS, right? So this thing up here versus the AMS light, easier to load. These guys, I tend to have motor slippage problems a little bit more. It could just be that I have way more of them, right? I only have four P1Ss way more we're up to 12 a1 combos so definitely like 3x so maybe that's why it's more noticeable to me it's definitely something to consider but on the flip side i have all kinds of problems with the ams system itself because like if the roll isn't full enough it'll kick up when it's trying to pull the filament and if the roll is sometimes too full and it's like slightly off track it'll like it'll wiggle to one side or wiggle to the other and then like that puts too much pressure on the pulling motor and it'll just stop and be like, oh, we're jammed up. Like it could do it, it'd be fine. Or another one that I sometimes get is like, if the roll is too full, it seems like the roll doesn't roll back fast enough to keep the filament on the roll and it starts to roll up into this like top dome and then gets all tangled around and then you just gotta like snip it because it gets all bent. It's terrible. I can't tell you how many times I'm like trying to get a print out fast and I've just run into stupid AMS issues with this thing, which does kind of suck because I want this to be the better machine for the print farm because is that Core XY. And I think that does lead me to my next point. You know, we have had nothing but struggles with certain prints. So here, I'll get a little bit closer. I print this tiger out. This is from Matt Meyer. He's a great model. It takes forever, by the way. <laughs> Lots of color changes. But he has these like custom supports that he painted in and they just pop right off. Excellent. Uh, but the problem is these print up independently and don't meet the body and join in until we get to this articulated joint up here. 
So P1S, great. A1, I've lost countless tiger legs to the A1. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes there is an advantage to the core XY over the bed slinger, and that's one of them. There's only a couple prints I've run into that with, but there are a few of them, and we've learned P1S is way better for that. So I'm glad I have them in my farm. Otherwise I'd probably just discontinue those models and not carry them, which would make me sad. That's a beautiful, beautiful articulated tiger. So we got two for the A1 in this category, one for the P1S. Last point I'm gonna make here, uh, the way the poop is flung on the A1 versus the shoot out the back on the P1S. On the P1S, I do have a system that like catches it in the back and wraps it around to the front. And I made a little removable, uh, I found this on Maker World, a removable poop shoe. Uh, but the problem is it's not 100% right. Like it's, it's gravity fed and it's just, it still will back up. It doesn't push it all the way down and it gets backed up into the chute. And then we get what I call the poop monster. So it starts like gathering in that chute and then it eventually comes up out of the chute and the print head knocks it and knocks the cover off and variably, immediately you get a layer shift in the print. It doesn't matter what you do. It's just done. Um, you might as well just cancel it. I'll put a little clip of a, uh, what the layer shift looks like. It's subtle, but it's not something I'm gonna sell to customers. So we end up B grading it and it's like, that was just a waste of filament. And for what? It's just, it didn't manage the poop properly. Uh, the number of layer shifts I've had because of poop issues on A1 is zero. I think we could run into problems potentially, but it would be more like it would drag, like the poop builds up, almost like a, a mound of ants trying to get to something. And then eventually I could see it would like fling hot poo into the poo that's there and then they would kind of like get tangled up and then the next time it went, it might drag it back onto the plate. Like I wouldn't want that, but honestly I haven't run into that. So I don't know. So point in favor of the A1. So in the maintenance and reliability category, I'm gonna say A1 again. Price A1, maintenance reliability A1. Last big point here, workflow simplicity. So I have been trying to do everything I can to speed up the workflow. I work a full-time job and I do have people that come in and help me run this business because I couldn't do it. And one of the things that I want to be able to do is make the entire workflow of our print farm very easy for people to just come in and take over a job. And one of those is, you know, teaching them to load the filaments. It's definitely easier on the AMS, like I said, to load those filaments. But the biggest, biggest, biggest piece is the touch screen on the A1 versus the, the P1 touch screen is here. The touch screen interface on the P1 is terrible. It's awful. And to make matters worse, I literally just filmed a B-roll where I pulled the filament out, put it back in and just tried to hit reprint on the last print. It doesn't want to do it because it's like, I don't know what that filament is. You've changed it since the last time we printed this file. Huh? Filament runs out, man. Like that should not be a feature. Uh, we need to fix that for sure. And I don't know that you can without the touchscreen. So the nice thing is on the A1, when you're going in, you can like tell it, oh, I want to print this file I printed before. And it'll be like, hey, you need to tell me what colors go where because this is what I think is currently on the AMS. And you do a little mapping sequence and then hit print. It's amazing. It's so helpful. And honestly, like people that do come in and help, they love just being able to hit reprint on something. And it's like, as soon as you finish on the A1, it's just front and center on the screen. It says, hey, it finished, okay, or reprint. And so you just clear the print or the plate and hit reprint and it's like, boom, done, amazing. So definitely in favor of the A1 there. And I just feel like, again, the touch screen is like easier to train people on how it all works. So, you know, I, I gotta give it to the A1. Again, better overall quality machine here. I think there's some little problems. I could probably figure out the poop shoot problem. And, you know, we could figure out some other stuff, but ultimately like price, ah, 
uh, it's just not there. That's I, I am excited for the Elegoo uh, Centuri Carbon. I want to see their AMS offering or MMU or whatever they end up calling it. I want to see that. I want to see that price point, but I definitely feel like they're trying to bring a core XY in at this price point, which is good in my book. Seeing the H2D, I think it's it could be interesting for print farms. Like it's gonna cut down on print time. I don't have one yet. Um, I didn't order one. I, I'm not sure I want to throw that cash down right now, just with the like tariff situation going on and everything. Like, I just don't know what that's gonna look like if we do hit a recession. So it's not like super high on my list. And last but not least, I will say this is a good machine. It could work. It just depends on what you're printing, right? We're talking about my print farm needs. If you're printing something like parts that are gonna be used in hardware situations, like, uh, you know, there's shops out there building airflow duct systems for, you know, workshops and dust collection and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I could see, like, you probably want PETG. You probably want ABS or ASA. Uh, let's say you're printing stuff for outside. You definitely want ABS or ASA. So, yeah, I, I do think you need an enclosure at that point. And this one doesn't offer that. So, definitely, depending on your business situation, the P1S or the P1P, I guess could make sense. And then you just print some sides to put on it. Uh, but I mean, I'd, I'd just get the, the ready to go one, the P1S if it were me. Uh, I've learned the less you have to do to get it up and running, the better, so. All right, that is all my thoughts on the A1 versus the P1S for a print farm. I haven't tried any other vendors to be honest, so. I, you know, maybe there's other points that, that we would have there if we were talking to other vendors, but uh, I just wanted to look at Bamboo Labs because that's what I use. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And if you have any thoughts, put them in the comments below. And if you're curious uh, about any of the stuff that I do, I will also link to my shop, to TikTok, and uh, you know, we'll have links to all the tools we use and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.